Going back views, it's I, James Calm, bringing you more half-assed reporting. And today we're on the west side at Pier 90. We're gonna run up and check out the Volta Art Fair. Stay tuned. Okay, well, we'll see if we can schmooze a ticket here. It's the uh, first week of March. And uh, that's what they call here in New York uh, Art Fair Week. So they've got the uh, the Armory Fair, the show Volta, Pulse, uh, Scope, a couple of other ones. And uh, well, I decided to start out here because I. I think they're going to be a little easier to slip in without uh, having to shell out the 25 bucks for an entry fee. It's a Julius Hoffman gallery from Leipzig, Germany. And uh, gee, they didn't bother to put any wall labels up, so I don't know who these pieces are by. Well, uh, I started covering art fairs oh, years ago, and uh, with the James Com report, I think uh, maybe somewhere about uh, 2006 or 2007, I actually covered nine fairs here in New York. <laughs> in one four-day period. Scangalcio Monbundo. Ethan Cohen, New York. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So we've got uh, chairs. Looks like they're made out of pieces of uh, Kalashnikovs. Kind of machine guns. This is nice. So we've got uh, uh, shell casings on the back. And then, uh, well, kind of masks. Yeah, I saw a movie with Nicolas Cage a couple of years ago. I mean, it was uh, Lords of War, something like that. He was a uh, weapons merchant selling a lot of uh, guns into Africa and uh, well this kind of looks like the remnants of uh, his little project everything is made out of uh, guns cartridges barrels I've got a shovel typewriter as I was saying, I covered a lot of art fairs, probably dozens and dozens of art fairs. And, uh, well, in the last couple of years, I've uh, not been so uh, enthusiastic. Much of it is because, uh, well, how many art fairs can you see? This is... Tessa Whitefield at the Papa Studios NASA Bahamas. Okay, this is a fun piece. So they've got little stars that are cut out of plywood and strung up like beads. Makes a little arch and uh, well, some figurative painting. Well, I'm not going to have time to go through. I talked to the people at the desk. They said that there's about 120 various galleries. We're just going to run through, catch a few glances, and maybe highlight some uh, interesting stuff. Oh, I like this Cameron Platter at the Hilger Bruch Kunsthalle, Vienna, Austria.
and uh, okay this looks like maybe color pencil on paper markers and uh, yeah, they've just got them uh, hung up on the big uh, clips Tom Anholt at the Michael Anderson Copenhagen Denmark Gallery. This is more Tom huh? Anholt yes. from the Michael Anderson Gallery in Copenhagen. It's probably about five by four and a half. Well, I was kind of looking at uh, some of Tom's figures and they made me think of uh, R.B. Katai. I like this with the uh, aqua blues, ultramarines. Also, uh, yeah, it's a very nice, rich surface with a lot of uh, glossy versus matte, rough versus smooth, chunky versus washy. Oh, here's some uh, Bushwick people. Lawrence Greenberg. And we've got a uh, selection of work here by Elena Herzog. Okay, well, I've been watching Elena's work for a while. Uh, I'll just come up and give you a quick uh, description. What a lot of her work is dealing with is uh, fabric and staples and uh, she kind of uh, wears away the fabric various kinds this is a carpet this isn't also a carpet uh, so she'll staple these down sometimes she does this on site and I guess these pieces are transportable so she's got them mounted on whether that is sheetrock or particle board. She just abrades them until you know, wears away the fabric and you get kind of a an abstract pattern. Hello. I'm good. How are you? And this is your side of the show. Congratulations. Okay, so this is work by Meg Hitchcock. Uh, well, <laughs> one of the words that I uh, don't want to use too much, but I think is very applicable in Meg's case, is obsessive. Now, we'll get up and look at these closer. Meg makes these fantastical collages, and she clips out letters, and I believe this is uh, from her series where she's taken the letters from the Quran and uh, then she's kind of re mixed them in collage forms to say different things and uh, well, sometimes she creates images or say, figurative images other times it's more abstract O Brahman free us from the bonds of death Letters cut from the Bible. Okay, so she goes both ways. Take the letters from the Bible and convert them into verses from the Quran. Um, 
if you go back on the James Com report, I don't know what, four or five years, we covered a show that she did at uh, Famous Accountants out in Bushwick. Actually, I think uh, Meg might be one of the uh, most outstanding artists that has come out of the Bushwick uh, community. This is titled Gitma the Prisoners at Guantanamo Bay, letters cut from the Quran and the Bible. So maybe we've got the names of all the prisoners? I said, I said, no, you don't. I know where that. Well, here's a piece by Aaron Johnson from the Stux Gallery. And, uh, well, I think I covered a show by Aaron, or at least has seen his work maybe in some group shows years ago, when he was showing at Rare, I believe. More Aaron Johnson. It's titled Mescatero. Efflorescence. Well, Aaron's kind of uh, transgressive. Uh, I enjoy some of the uh, technical stuff that he's doing on the pieces like this that are kind of uh, laminated. Titled De Kooning in the Studio. Well, this kind of makes me think of Ensor. And, uh, well, it's funny, we'll, uh, you know, compare the chunkiness of this with the uh, added on fabric collages that actually uh, stick out like uh, three or four inches. And we'll compare that to the uh, kind of the flat laminate things. It's called Walking the Tiger, acrylic on polyester knit mesh. But uh, yeah, if you look at this, it's almost like it's uh, on layers of plastic. Oh boy. Well, this is one of the reasons I decided to come here. This is a show of work by Simon Link at Carriage Trade. And, uh, well, I'm a big fan of Simon's work. I love his use of text. And uh, these pieces are all based on ads in art forum. And I tell you, I look at these and I am amazed at his uh, articulate text. And, uh, well, I also like the kind of uh, use of the thick, chunky paint. And then the, I don't know how he does it, he must have tiny little brushes. Now, another aspect is that uh, a lot of this is classic art forum stuff, and uh, I think Simon is, lives in London, so he's kind of uh, one step removed away from uh, the American art forum. Other criteria. Anyway, we've uh, kind of started uh, looking at each other's work on Facebook, and I, I saw his work at another uh, art fair years ago and featured it. I think he's one of the more interesting artists. And, uh, okay, this is nice. I think each one of these pieces is about a 12-inch square. 
Well, we've buttonholed Peter Scott, the uh, proprietor at Carriage Trade. He's going to tell us a little bit about Simon. Okay, so you're saying this painting is from 1988? 1988, and Simon Link has been doing this work uh, since the early 80s. And uh, this is obviously uh, our format from 1987. Okay, so tell me uh, a little bit about, do you know about the technical side of this? I mean, does he start out with a uh, page from Art Forum and then he glues it on the canvas? Or does he no, no. project this somehow? Or uh, I, I know that they're not based on the pages. Um, I imagine he projects them. So you don't know all the secrets and the chemicals and everything else? because Well, was... they're oil paintings. Okay. And I know that he, that he uses like conservative glasses. So some people think these are block prints, but actually they're done with a brush. So you have this extreme contrast between a brush that would be, you know, a half inch, three quarter inch to this tiny. Right. You know, it's it's great that he's able to get that sharp edge, but also have this kind of, uh, you know, nice and textural, juicy oil painting along with it. Exactly. And there's there's some Magdalene Thomas, one of my favorites. In some ways, I think that he um, he sets up this almost impossible situation for himself where uh, he, he has, I mean, he, he, he works within the constraints of the art form, the size of art form, so these are almost identical. All right, the art form is a square magazine, right. that's right. For well-rounded people. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> well, I remember when I used to read art form. Uh, I don't know what, 15 or 16 years ago? Right, and at a certain point people start to just look at the ads. That's right, it's what they call art porn. Yes. Does he ever do anything besides art form? I mean, does he do he's art had, news or anything? No. Just uh, art form? Just art form. And he, he's had periods where he kind of deviated from that, or he did the cover in a smaller uh, scale. He's also done them large. Yes, I've seen larger, yeah. some of his larger pieces. They're I wonderful. I think the one-to-one -one relationship is the most interesting. Because I think in a way it's a little bit like Warhol's Brillo box, where essentially it's, it's, uh, it's like classic pop art. It's basically so taking the real object the same size and then just doing it by hand. Right, but the difference, you know, with, from pop art is that it's not mechanical. He's really... Right. Uh, well, but he's got to be using projectors or something to get everything proportionate and... Well, <laughs> this is why I wish he was here. I would, I would try to pin him down and, and pump him for all of his secrets. Yes. Now, these two pieces here have got a lot of paint on there. Are, they, is these, are these from a different period? Uh, or are no, they? Th these are from like 2007. 2007, I mean, okay. More like 2015. Right. I mean, these are obviously, you know, more exaggerated. And, I mean, I think there's a real humor in the work. Oh, no, there's a lot of humor, and it also, I think, plays on a lot of um, painting tropes and just the idea of, and like you said, pop art, but how do you introduce uh, serious kind of alchemical painting into the whole question. Anyway, Mr. Scott, thanks for the ex explanation. Thank you. And say, say hi to Simon for us. Okay, I will. Thanks. Now, I guess maybe uh, the concept of this fair is that each gallery, each booth is a one-person presentation. So in that way, it's kind of nice. It's not so uh, confusing. Skyler Fine, Jonathan Ferreira, New Orleans. Okay, so uh, yeah, we got giant matchbook covers. Oh, I remember that, the limelight. Well, sometimes it's hard to beat the uh, punchy designs of, uh, of a matchbook cover. Oh, I like that one. Nails. So they've got a couple of curated spaces here. Doreen Garner.
it's good. It's really well. But, um, okay, this is fun. But the press roll is really good. Hey. Hello. Blue. The press roll is really good. So they've kind of uh, cut away the uh, strided letter layers of this piece. That's nice. Well, I wrote a piece a couple of years ago talking about um, going down to Miami and trying to visit I don't know about 18 or 19 art fairs and uh, oh, maybe some of this is fabric in there maybe colored plaster of some kind anyway at that point I said to myself that uh, when you go to, to an art fair like this and you're running past uh, hundreds and hundreds of booths you get about uh, four tenths of a second to decide whether you want to stop and look at something. This is a piece by Kate Clark titled Lingering 2016 Antelope Hide Thread Pins Clay Rubber Eyes Foam and Wood. And uh, it's another piece by Kate titled Behaving Bear Cub Hide Anyway, when you have to look at uh, maybe thousands of artists works you have a very short period of time what it ends up ha being like is like a uh, zoetrope which is a uh, little spiral device you look through slots there various little pictures on the inside and as you spin it it actually has the uh, the illusion of movement oh, these are interesting Ibrahim Ahmed anyway the uh, the illusion I was trying to make is that uh, if you're going to a lot of fairs like <laughs> coming to the uh, art fair week here in New York and walking through about 20 fairs um, you might not be able to see individual pieces but if you kind of blur your eyes and uh, look at the big picture you can start to see trends and uh, commonalities Leonardo Benzant these are on uh, unstretched canvas. It's like oil stick and oil, maybe. Fairs are also a great opportunity to uh, get an idea of what uh, is popular in the market. Kazu Kazuma Koika. Osaka, Japan. Becca Lowry at Fred Gabitiero, New Haven. Oh, this is fun. It's kind of uh, it's a carving, weaving, wire constructions. great that uh, it's got all kinds of references Mexican ceramics weaving and uh, kind of like the uh, weathered looking worn and torn surfaces Oh, 
that's pretty. Laura Bruce, New Art Projects, London. And I don't know, maybe I'll get back up here and uh, pop in and see the armory tomorrow night. Uh, I'm not sure, I think there are probably at least uh, six or seven fairs. So, uh, this is James Com coming to you from Volta on the west side the Volta Art Fair. Thank you, Kate. Whoa, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.